Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Leroy Samaitua. I am the Tribal Monitor Group Manager for Western Resources Incorporated. I'm from the Hopi Tribe, which is located in Northern Arizona. And I'm here with Bernadette Cara. We're gonna be talking today about careers in cultural and biological resource studies. So let me go ahead and turn this over to Bernadette and she can introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Bernadette Cara. I am the Tribal Monitor Field Director with Westland Resources Incorporated and Leroy and I have both been part of this program for the past three years. Today we are going to discuss with you um, cultural and biological research studies, what they are and why these careers are important to Native youth and tribal communities. We will also be touching on careers in cultural and biological resource studies, as well as education and training to forge a path in these careers. Our experience, and also talk about our experience with the Tonto National Forest Westland Tribal Monitor Program. What is a cultural resource? A cultural resource is archeological sites or artifacts from both prehistoric and historic periods. So basically anything that is over 50 years old is considered a cultural resource. Um, it could be an architectural structure, with, which is an old building, maybe an old church, and, you know, it's, they built a new one. As long as it's over 50 years old. And another cultural resource, example of a cultural resource could be an engineered feature or a human constructed or altered landscape. It could also be a traditional cultural property. So basically what a cultural resource is, is, is anything that is associated with our past. What is a biological resource or what are biological resource studies? So let's talk about what's a biological resource. So it's really anything dealing with nature. Um, we're gonna be talking about plants animals, water, which could include aquatic plants and animals, and also it's just overall biological communities. So like we said, it's just studies associated with the natural world. So why is this important for tribal communities? Why should we be part of this? Well, it's an increased participation of tribal members in cultural and environmental baseline studies. In the past, it has always been non-native biologists or archaeologists who are doing studies. And by having us in there, we then have representation. Um, you can also do this type of work throughout the United States. There's many opportunities out there. There's knowledge of heritage and nature and passing this on to our youth. We talk about this information that we are gathering it's a, a, a very important source from the field for our tribal elders, but also our tribal leadership. We also can increase or get increased uh, cultural sensitivity in the archeological community. We get to use our traditional ecological knowledge, which is knowledge that's passed on from generation to generation. This could be cultural, it could be uh, dealing with our ceremonies, or it could also be biological, talking about plants, minerals, any of this knowledge that's passed along is what we are considering traditional ecological knowledge. Working with each other, we get better collaboration and also understanding. It gives a native view. So like we're saying, a seat at the table, we get representation. By us having representation, we are represented as Native Americans within these different studies and within these different fields. So I, I just think it's something that that there is actually a void and that's something that needs to be filled. What are the careers in cultural and biological studies? Cultural careers can consist of, you know, becoming an archaeologist. Um, you can also be a cultural resource specialist as well as a cultural resource monitor. One of the big seats as far as careers go under the cultural field is becoming a tribal historic preservation officer that heads the cultural resource department and its programs. Leroy and myself 
and all of our other monitors are considered tribal consult specialists. Biological careers is you can become a biologist and study plant in wildlife. You can also have a career taking care of water resources as well as become someone that manages the land as well as wildlife. Cultural resource surveys in this photo you can see takes us all over the land. Basically we have you know tribal representation from from our different tribes and cultural resource surveys take us to our to our land. It gives us the opportunity to go and explore and find sites where our ancestors once once roamed. Their foot, footprints are in the land. And in these photos you can see this is some of the cultural resource resources survey areas that we have visited. We have representation in the photo from in the on the left from Pueblo of Zuni, myself, Autumn representation and Hopi representation as well as Pueblo of Zuni on the lower right. And as you can see in that photo, they're having a discussion analyzing the rock art that is in the in the picture. With that, it's, it's allowed us to conduct survey work on public lands and for a resolution project as well as Patagonia Mountains, which is private land, as well as Globe Miami area in Arizona and BHP lands that is also located in Arizona and also as private land, as well as dozens of large to small surveys for a variety of clients. And what that does is it, it allows us to integrate into archeological crews. We have surveyed over 60,000 plus acres and have crossed many hills and valleys in New Mexico and Arizona. Data recovery and, and monitoring projects, that work consists of archaeologists, as you can see in the photo on the left, that he is monitoring the excavation work that is being done at the time. The importance of that is to make sure that there's no artifact, no artifacts or features destroyed and while they're doing this. The photo in the center shows a feature of a large roasting pit that was discovered at, at a site during excavation, as well as um, an artifact on the lower right that shows that was located as well during this data recovery. Data recovery has allowed tribal monitors to participate in training to integrate into archaeological work and crews. Some of the data recovery work that our tribal monitors have participated in thus far is the South Mountain Project Freeway located in Phoenix, Arizona. They have also participated in a data recovery project of the New Mexico electrical line testing. They have done several data recovery projects for a Marana development located in Marana, Arizona had data recovery work referencing small testing and monitoring projects in central and southern Arizona. Part of our data recovery work consists of um, not only recording features and artifacts on cultural sites, we also have the opportunities to give tribal perspectives on these sites, but we also come across very sensitive areas as well. These sensitive areas consist of ancestral remains. If we come across a Native American site and it has ancestral remains, um, we have a process that we must follow. And the reason we follow it is because we do it out of respect for our ancestors and our, our communities. Basically, this process is that if we come across any type of ancestral or human remains, we immediately stop work and we notify our supervisor. After that, we go and we mark this location and we wait to hear from the supervisor on how to proceed. A lot of times what happens in these situations is that we will notify the tribes and we'll make contact with them, let them know that the, of our discoveries out here and it allows them to get to have an opportunity to go out and perform some type of spiritual blessing. 
and then we, we wait for, wait to find out how we're going to proceed. A lot of the times, is, this is a very time sensitive situation and we try to get tribal representation out there as soon as possible to take care of the ancestral remains. Because we, we have such a sensitivity to this and the utmost respect for our ancestral remains, we have had to teach uh, project proponents, uh, their employees, as well as contractors on how to be culturally sensitive. We have recently had the opportunity to make a cult cultural sensitivity training video, which allows employers to train their employees as well as con contractors, vendors, anybody that goes onto their properties, how to treat these specific locations with respect. So, as I said, we have managed to start making people aware of how important and sensitive this part of our work is. Coming across ancestral remains is very significant to a lot of us and what we do is, is um, we do our best to take care, take care of them. So with that, like I said, there's, um, there's many ways that we have come into doing, doing that. I'll let Leroy discuss a little bit more of what type of steps we have taken to ensure that these areas are taken care of. Well, I think just by us being out there, and especially having this representation from the tribes, we're able to give the respect to our ancestors, and that's really important. And as she talked about, we were able to get some training out there for them, and I think that's a, that's a big, big plus for the tribes that we're able to do this. But not only archaeologically, we can also interject our own information into biology. And that's what these next pictures are. We're um, talking about biology. We did some environmental site assessment plant and animal surveys. Uh, you'll see the cactus with the fruit. You know, fruit's really important to a lot of the tribes, so we're able to get out there and do a biological assessment, but also being able to do a plant salvage survey where the tribes are able to go out. They can go look at these plants, and if they need collection, they can go in and go out there and get them, and we're able to um, put this down on paper for them, which I think is a really big deal. Um, we've also worked with, as you see these photos, um, we were seeing plant identific identification and culturally significant species cataloging. So like I get, I, again, I said... Um, we're able to provide this for the tribes so they can come out and uh, get these resources if needed. And I think there's been a really good collaboration with the biologists because the biologists are learning from us. They're learning about native names. They're learning about uses that we use them in. But we're also learning from the biologists in the sense of uh, we're able to get scientific names. We're able to categorize them. And um, we were able to do some work with the University of Arizona and, and the Forestry Service where we're able to, as you see, the digital tools for obtaining knowledge of plants in the American Southwest. And I think by this collaboration, it's opening the eyes for our people in that um, we do need people in biology. We need natives in biology so then we can have our own perspectives put in on what we think these are, what the uses are. And with this, we're also able to attend conferences and present our findings of what we found out there. And I think that's really important. We are also able to go out and do phase one environmental site assessment and environmental monitoring. So we are able to get out there and look at these resources and make sure there's no harm brought upon them, whether it be archaeological or biological. This is the, what they call the monitoring. We're able to get out there and monitor this work. So as far as if you're interested in these careers that we've kind of talked about, what do we need to do to become this? Uh, education and training for these careers. So what does it take to become an archaeologist? First, one path is you, there's a two-year associate's degree. I know 
Pima Community College in Arizona offers this, where you're able to become an archaeological or um, archaeologist you can be a technician. But to be a full archaeologist, I believe you have to actually go through a four-year program. And there are um, native colleges that offer this, but also local and uh, state colleges where you can get a undergrad degree in archaeology. And many of the archaeologists do go on for master's and PhD. Once they're done with their degree, they go to a field school, which teaches them how to do work out in the field. And this is preferred for a lot of companies. So if you are looking down this path, I would say you this is kind of the order you would want to go in. But a field school is definitely preferred. To become a biologist, you will need an undergrad degree. You will have to go for a four-year degree at an accredited university. But uh, like I said, many native colleges also offer this. And then from there, a lot of biologists will go on and do masters or PhDs for this. Um, you can also do internships or volunteering experience. All this is preferred because it just gives you experience that you're able to do a lot of this work. The path that we took, myself and Bernadette, was the cultural uh, tribal cultural specialist. And we obtained our training through Tunnel National Forest. Uh, we were able to do the tribal monitor program where we were trained by archaeologists and biologists to be able to accompany and work with archaeologists and biologists. But part of this training also was we got to use our traditional ecological knowledge, which we said was just knowledge that was passed down through generations. Um, we are one of the many programs. I know there's other agency and tribal training programs within different states that have the same kind of program. So if you're interested in any of these, you know, look up, look up what it does become to be do this. So on the next photo, you're going to see Bernadette. She's one of our specialists along with another tribal monitor. And on the left is Galen. He's an archaeologist. On the right, you'll see is Daniel. He is a biologist. And by us being in this tribal monitor training, we're able to uh, collaborate more and have more knowledge and more data. And this is just a kind of a picture of some of our work that we do. But um, Bernadette's going to go ahead and talk about the tribal monitor program itself. The tribal monitor program was established in early 2018. And it was established to increase tribal participation in cultural resource baseline studies for the proposed resolution copper mine near Superior, Arizona. We had tribes such as Hill River Indian Community, the White Mountain Apache Tribe, Yavapai Apache Nation, Hopi Tribe, Pueblo of Zuni, Auction Indian Community, and the Mescalero Apache Tribe, which sent over 30 tribal members to be part of the, of the tribal monitor program. The monitors are considered the eyes and ears of the Autumn, Apache, Yavapai, Hopi, and Zuni peoples during archaeological surveys, construction, monitoring, and excavation projects. The purpose for the program was to provide a native, a native perspective during cultural and natural resource studies, and also to increase tribal participation in the management of our shared history, the land, and its resources. This, this uh, photo here just shows you gives you an idea of the tribal cultural consultant representation that we have within the tribal monitor program. We have representatives from, again, like I said, the Hopi, the Autumn, the Zuni, and the different bands of Apaches. So originally, um, this program was initially for the resolution project, what we uh, Bernadette talked about. So it was the initiation for the resolution copper project and survey on public land. But because of our success, we've been able to expand into to other lands, private lands and working with other clients. So our expansion into private lands as part is voluntary surveys and general integration into non-resolution Westland cultural and environmental projects. So we're able to work 
um, in other type of projects and accompanying archaeologists and biologists. Currently, we have 27 tribal cultural consultants, which are the monitors, on staff, which includes two full-time positions. Western Resources just became an employee-owned company, and the monitors are now eligible for benefits for this employee stock ownership plan. We've also had monitors work for other companies successfully and been able to monitor from California to Carlsbad, uh, New Mexico to New York. And this has just expanded work experience and training for these people in cultural resources and environmental cons um, consulting. Some of our accomplishments, I think, that of this uh, program we've got uh, gained was we're able to be the eyes and ears for the tribe. We're able to give information directly to the tribes, which is, I think, a big deal. We've been able to give assistance on burial recovery and repatriation. The tribal monitors, it's opened their eyes to archaeology and biology, so they're able to get this work experience with archaeological data recovery, surveying, monitoring, site files, and reporting. Also been able to work with biology in site assessments, environmental monitoring, clean water act surveys, project management, and office tasks. Like this, we're able to get out here and talk to people in public outreach and conferences, which has been great for the monitors, and also a lot of training opportunities. I think what we've encountered by working, because a lot of us have um, not been in this work prior to us working here. Um, Bernadette is different. She has worked in cultural research before. But myself, I, I have a degree in biology, and I've never worked in cultural resource. But by working there, my eyes have been opened in the sense that a lot of the people we work for are non-native archaeologists and non-native biologists. And so I think it is very important that we get representation, that you as Native youth go into these fields and be able to work for this. I would love to work alongside another Native American biologist or another Native American archaeologist. We have one on staff. She's Hopi. She went to school for this. I'd love to see a whole staff full of that. And I think... That's just the dream of myself, you know. But I think, like this slide says, collaboration and learning from each other. We've learned just as much from the archaeologists and biologists as they learn from us. They get to hear a Native perspective. And this just shows that, you know, even during COVID, we were able to do it successfully and safely, which I think is great. But uh, Bernadette, do you have any some uh, last thoughts about this? My thoughts are I I too encourage the youth to get involved in these these fields for just to fill the 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 voidance that is there. It's very important that we do what we need to do to keep representing our tribes and our culture and our you know whether it's our past, our present or and into the future. It's important that we keep protecting Mother Earth. Keep protecting our land, our resources, such as um, biological and archaeological. So uh, I too encourage you all, if if um, this is something you're interested in doing, to get involved, be a tribal representative for your communities. Your elders would greatly appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and leave you our email addresses. So then if you have any more information or you want more information, um, please contact us on how to do this. But um, thank you for listening to us, and I hope you guys keep safe out there. Thank you.